Good morning, welcome to Vicky3 Academy. I'm Walker and here we are doing Persia in our basic country guide series. I think this is useful just because it's gonna be one of the new recommended countries for new players, but I also think Persia is gonna be really fun. Um, and so if you haven't if you haven't played around with Persia, then this is a guide to help you get started. So Persia. Historically, what's going on here? Um, you are playing as the Qajar dynasty. This is one of these dynasties that comes into power after there's like Basically, the entire 18th century is anarchy in Persia after the collapse of the Safavid state. Um, there's a there's a lot a lot of really interesting things happen in, in 18th century Persia, including the the rise of the Afsharids. Uh, but unless you want to have a really long conversation about Iranian history, just let me just follow the the thread. Crazy stuff happens, and Qajars emerge as the the leading force. Um, but they're never really like a leading force in the sense that most of the actual government that they were able to to constitute was pretty much restricted to Tabriz, Tehran. They had a little bit of influence um, in the south, but like by and large, they were governing a lot of these territories um, through intermediaries, through like essentially a Crusader Kings to vassal network, um, and so. So don't don't be too worried about the power of the Qajar dynasty. Fortunately, that that's good because you need to get rid of these guys. Both your leader and your heir apparent begin as landowners. When that is the case, they you got to get rid of them. You cannot keep um, a monarchy around if both the heir if, if both the heir apparent and the the current ruler are are landowners. So just slot that into your plan. You need to get those guys out of here. But in terms of what actually happens over the course of the 19th century, historically, um, Persia is one of these focal points for what is known as the Great Game. There's uh, this long contest between Russia and the UK for control of Central Asia, because Central Asia is going to control both this this overland um, border trade with, with China, which still exists, even though it's shifting more and more to be naval. But way more importantly, it controls the naval... Or the land route from Russia down to India. And so if Russia can control all of Central Asia or just a land route out to India, then Russia can threaten the very existence of the British Empire. And, and you know, yes, they were allies in World War One, but lest anyone forget, um, that that was a, an alliance of, of accident that they happened to, to just be allied at the point when World War One broke out, because there had been lots of cases when Russia and the UK had been um, nearly at war. For that matter, Great Britain and the UK nearly went to war in, over the Fushota incident. Like, a lot of these people who were friends were only friends because they they hated Germany more. Um, and this was, this was one of these cases where they were... They, the Russians and the British were fighting for control of Central Asia, and you, as Persia, were kind of like one of the, the the bees in everybody's bonnet, Somebody, something that everybody wanted, because you actually are pretty rich, right? You have a 4 million GDP, 6 million population. You start with a, a larger population than Brazil, even at, at game start, but you're really backwards. Like, you're really backwards. So, what do you have going for you? Well... At least you're not dramatically behind in terms of production research, right? You don't have cotton gin, which puts you a little bit behind because some people some people start with gin and then can work on lathe. You're many techs away from railways, but you you do have shaft mining, which not everybody does. Um, militarily, you need mandatory service, so you're really far behind in your military tech. You don't even have academia yet. You do have centralization and urban planning, so not everything's, like, terrible, but you start very behind in terms of technology, and so that means that you're, you've got a lot of work to do there. Um, you also start very behind in terms of your your laws, and then so you have lots of work to do there. Uh, but you you are not entirely without resources. So... How can you how can you handle your current situation as Persia um, in patch 1.0.6? And I imagine probably in patch 1.1, unless they change something dramatic. Uh, I, I think you're going to need to use corn laws. I think corn laws, it's the more the more that I play around with this, the more that I find it's just it, it is a, a useful tool for basically everyone who starts with a strong landowner, simply because it gives you ways to interact with them reliably without uh, RNG. So in order to activate corn laws and, and benefit from it, you do need to go into export tariffs on grain. And by doing that, going in here, you're going to open up a journal entry. And that journal entry is going to uh, give you some mean time to happen. There we go. It's going to give you some 
mean time to happen on pulse events and one of the on pulse events is going to be one that replaces your leader with somebody who has the market liberal ideology which will allow you to change your economic system into laissez-faire um, and your trade policy into free trade if you so desire both of those are even though interventionism is not bad, both of those are really helpful for you whenever you're in a landowner battle, simply because they're going to add approval to the landowner, which then allows you to do things that will add disapproval to the landowner. And so like, just be aware that that's like the main value of the corn law. Laissez-faire happens to also be very strong, but you do need a lot of uh, a lot of industrialists and you don't have many of them at the beginning of the game. In fact, you I don't think you have any capitalists at the beginning of the game, but you can fix that, right? That's what construction points are for. Um, so as Persia, what is your goal in terms of your government and organization? I think it's to utilize corn laws, get landowners to do some stuff for you that ultimately is going to hurt them, um, but but is going to make them happy temporarily, and then get them out of government and start instituting real changes. In order to institute real changes here, I think you are ultimately going to need to find a way to get into landed voting, because that is going to give you a lot more legitimacy without requiring you have the landowner in power. Um, so I think at the beginning of the game, you do need to have the intelligentsia with you. Um, wow, holy crap, what is going on with our lag? I don't know what's going on with our lag. Something's, something's wrong, something's wrong. Uh, but if you go into an, a landowner and intelligentsia grouping, this this might hurt your legitimacy um, under patch 1.1 because the intelligentsia are going to hate so many of your laws and there's going to be incoherence here. Um, but it's worth it for the temporary debuff simply because it's going to allow you to go into landed voting, which the uh, the landowners are not going to oppose considering that they own the land. Um, and then it's going to let you have access to a different distribution of power and therefore different legitimacy because your distribution of power with autocracy, you get 30 legitimacy from including the head of state and government, whereas landed voting, you get 20 legitimacy always. So this means, this means you have to have the landowners in power to have basically like any legitimacy at all. Whereas this says, that's not true anymore. You'll probably still need to have landowners in power for a little while after you pass landed voting simply because of the way um, voting strength is going to impact legitimacy now, but that's a short-term problem. Um, whereas autocracy at the moment, when especially when you have a, a, a landowner monarch, autocracy is a, a long-term problem. So you're going to do some adjustments here in terms of your laws. You're going to you're going to tweak things around um, in terms of your budget. You are going to have a lot of authority, but depending on what's going on here, you probably need to be bolstering the intelligentsia and then aim to suppress the uh, the landowner whenever you can get them out of power, which is going to require you get, you know, probably landed voting and laissez-faire, and then maybe appointed bureaucrats, some stuff. You're going to need to do some stuff in order to remove the strength of the landowner before you can remove them from power. Um, but that's that's okay, because you got tools. And one of the tools you have, of course, is consumption taxes. You can always aim consumption taxes at rich people. That's like the general recommendation I'm offering people right now. Um, make sure that you also have a... Uh, a road maintenance decree wherever you're doing your construction, which should probably be wherever you're you're trying to um, actually. So you can put it in your capital. There are a lot of conversations when it when it comes to where you build first. You can put it in your capital. You can develop your the outside territories. My recommendation is if you can get value from developing your capital, do so. Um, but be aware of where your resources are. Right, Persia does not have logging camps there but you have 40 coal mine there. That's awesome. You have 60 coal mine there. That's really good. Um, and you have 36 iron in Isfahan. So you, you do need to choose where you're building. I think, I think generally speaking, I would recommend um, doing your industrial stuff in your capital and then everything else in your, in your, uh, your hinterlands for now. So either you start by developing your capital with, you know, maybe a construction sector or two, because you have a lot of money, right? You could maybe even support a level three construction sector in your capital if you wanted to, but eventually you're going to need to develop iron mines because once you start, once you start really building stuff, you're going to want to switch over to, uh, to, to iron frame buildings. It's, there's so much more efficient. If you, if you have three extra wood constructors, uh, construction sectors, 
you're building at 11, whereas if you have three more iron frames, you're building at 20. It's almost twice as fast to be doing it that way. It's it's really, really good. Plus, that's going to require you to build iron mines, which in turn are going to are gonna just generate more jobs outside of peasants, which is going to indirectly hurt landowners because it means they, they don't have access to the production there. In terms of your research, I, 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 I think it really kind of depends. I think that given the the nature of the persian economy in particular you probably want to pick up uh academia first just so you can put um a little university in your capital either size two or three um because that is going to add a lot of strength to your intelligentsia but in turn like you you have a large enough economy that you can support a small um a small university which is going to speed up your innovation right if you have a level three uh, university that's more than a 10 percent increase to your to your weekly innovation so it's 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 worth building um outside of that basic construction plan i think you want to be mostly ignoring the rural stuff except for mining and focusing instead on the the urban things and then that will result in you doing some extra construction here once you start hitting your infrastructure cap because you will before you you hit railway, then you can move over to Tabriz. That would be cool. Um, Tabriz is also a very very good spot. And don't worry about taxation capacity problems. By the way, as basically anyone, unless you um, are out of peasants. Like pe peasants with tax cap problems are a good thing, not a bad thing. The fact that this is if this was twenty percent peasants, I'd be worried about the tax ta taxation capacity. But seventy eight percent is great. Market, um, you have access to opium, which is really good, because that means that you, you can have long, drawn-out conflicts uh, in the mid to late game, especially against enemies who do not have opium. So don't be afraid to, to lean into that. You'll, you'll end up wanting to do a lot of fighting as Persia, because you are going to need some more resources. Um, so for those of you who have this distribution on, on iron out here... That's pretty much it. You really don't have a lot of iron. Um, fortunately for you, there is some iron here, but you need to go out and get it. You, you, your iron is currently under other people's land, and so be aware that as Persia, part of what part of your goal is to industrialize, but part of your goal is to also militarize. And so you're going to want to, especially after you pick up academia and maybe pick up mechanical tools you're you're gonna want to end up making sure that you get mandatory service line infantry and napoleonic warfare because if you have those techs then your strength is going to be a lot higher than these guys because if you get guns and cannons and and for that matter guns and good cannons and your opponents are fighting with um irregulars yeah with like a regulars and uh and infantry focus you're gonna just trample them you are going to trample them, I promise. I promise, or your money back. In terms of your diplomacy as, as Persia, um, be aware that Russia is terrifying and um, Great Britain is not always protective, and you probably are not going to get along particularly well with the Ottomans. Um, so you start in like a, a very squeezed position diplomatically. Don't declare war on these guys unless you're sure that Russia won't back them up. Like, if, if Russia is either doesn't have an interest in the region or is currently engaged in another world war somewhere else, then it can become a lot more profitable to attack into here. Because you do. You want to attack into here. These are, these are territories that you really do want to control. But... If you're like, all right, sweet, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a vassal out of Afghanistan, and it says Russia and the Ottoman Empire are planning on siding with the enemy, maybe don't attack them right now, because that would be pretty bad. You, I don't think you would win if you if you started that fight. But if you started, like, this fight, you might do it, right? You don't see you don't see Russia on the, on the, the Mejoyan, um, the enemy immediately side. So just... Be aware of the diplomatic situation that you are lining yourself up for um, when you when you're ready to start a fight, uh, and and do your best to utilize your influence to make the people that you need to stop fighting you not fight you. That's 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 your basic diplomatic situation as Persia. You do not have a navy, but you can get a navy if you want one, because um, your economy is pretty big. And I think that if you're going to start fighting against Oman and these guys, then it is recommended. Because keep in mind that as Persia, as the Persian culture, um, you are Middle Eastern heritage. And so that that's pretty neat. Um, this is this is a little a little goofball in terms of 
these being options here, but whatever. Like it's it's cute that we have people with two primary cultures, even if they have the same heritage. But the uh, the Middle Eastern heritage means that you tol under racial um, segregation, you would tolerate most of the Middle East, and that's good because it's going to be hard to get down um, to multiculturalism immediately. And you start in racial segregation, which means that you can immediately tolerate uh, the Middle Eastern pops that you conquer as Persia. So. I think that's a basic country guide for Persia. Um, let me know if that was helpful. I think that's that basically spells out the steps that, regardless of whether or not you're in patch 1.1 or 1.06, I think that's going to be the the opening steps for you as Persia to 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 declare your entrance into the world. So good luck. Uh, that's Walker. Take care.